Welcome to the GTN show. Now, in case you hadn't noticed, the triathlon season is winding down and winter is on its way if it hasn't arrived already. Well, with that, we have some tips to help you survive and even thrive winter as a triathlete. Yep, there's also some new world records to discuss, some new races for 2023, and some new innovations like denim cycling shorts. We're going to start off with some of the stuff we've noticed on social media and the internet over the last week. And we're going to start with this good news from Lionel Sanders. He's had a baby boy. Well, yeah, him. Welcomed his baby boy. Him, well, his and Aaron. Well. Yeah. <laughs> him and Aaron. <laughs> Congratulations. Aaron had the baby boy. So uh, both of you. Yeah, Lionel actually said he took a little hiatus from social media before he had actually announced it just to enjoy the birth and everything and uh, welcome the baby. He says, happy to report mom and baby are doing well and he's back training so yeah we look forward to seeing him at a race soon whole different life now for him with a baby i yeah. can tell you <laughs> be interesting to see if he sort of changes his tack of training and does a bit more intensity and less mega sessions i can't um, imagine that's yeah, going to change <laughs> say no yeah <laughs> um this next thing we spotted from a instagram page that we all follow called run ix and they've got the unusual athlete of the day post here and they're saying at 55 steve edwards a british man has just run the thames meander marathon doesn't sound anything particularly interesting does it and the time of 3 45 yesterday morning however this was his 948th marathon of his career wow um, impressive apparently he averages about two a month since he was 18 which is yeah and he impressive. looks healthy still doesn't average he average for all of those about three hours 20 for each one of them so yeah, that, yeah. and yeah. he's doing he's obviously got a little well this was a bit slower so he must have done some pretty speedy marathons to average that i wonder how long till he gets to the thousand marathon mark not long i would imagine <laughs> yeah moving on and sophie caldwell has married tom evans uh, they had their wedding this last weekend so congratulations to the happy couple uh, they put some pretty cool photos up on social media big congratulations from the whole team at gtn on your wedding yeah and for those of you who don't know sophie caldwell is a british triathlete obviously and tom evans an ultra distance runner so um very cool to see those two worlds coming together quite literally um uh, other news for the british female triathletes we've had two more mbes awarded to the gold medal winning well the girls from the gold medal winning team in tokyo jess learmonth and georgia taylor brown and jess learmonth has posted here a special day at windsor castle collecting my mbe with john and my parents as they couldn't be in tokyo it was a lovely to share the day with them yeah that's very true isn't it a year yeah. and a bit on so. yeah exactly and georgia taylor also post posted it's been a pretty special day one i'll never forget feeling extremely honored and a little bit proud they get to hold on to this medal for the rest of my life congratulations to both of them for their mbes mm. and finally we have this from carl smith he posted that he's back in action he said oh baby the doors are open and we're back in business he uh, had a bit of a virus in kona which uh, took him out of kona and then he struggled with it afterwards uh, he said it's been a rough old couple of months with a virus that knocked the laugh out of me um, but it's time to get back in the saddle and then he went on the mx endurance podcast and he's actually announced that next year he's planning to go back to the short distance racing and try and qualify for Paris 2024 for New Zealand. He said it was his uh, his goal to actually go to Tokyo, uh, but he was left out of that team and he was very disappointed. He moved on and just kind of did some 70.3s because he was fit uh, and got a taste for long course and was really successful. He actually got 11th yeah. at the St. George Ironman World Champs earlier this year. Uh, but now he says he's got some unfinished business in the short course and he's hoping to go to Paris 2024 uh, for the short distance. So yeah, a whole new change of direction for him and we wish him well on that that path yeah it's interesting to see so many athletes doing that swap yeah. and see he says how well he's going works. to do a christian blumenfeld and then straight off to paris go back to iron man so. well good luck with that <laughs> okay if you're in the northern hemisphere winter is upon us boo uh, yeah definitely not triathlon season anymore but gtn is here with some top tips so you can keep motivated and fit through the winter starting with number one get outdoors. It can be tempting with all this new pain cave technology and your new kicker and everything to just stay indoors and stay dry and warm. But uh, get outside, get some fresh air, wrap up in all those warm clothes and you'll be amazed at what it does for your mental health and also your fitness. Even if it's not your normal triathlon training, it's still worthwhile getting outside in that fresh air. You don't have to do it every day uh, just to keep the laundry levels manageable, but try it out once or twice a week, uh, wrap up warm and just enjoy enjoy the outdoors once in a while.
Mm, it's easy for us to sit here and say this in the warm, isn't it? But um, it's yeah. very, it's very true. Point number two, which leads on nicely, is get the right clothes. So James kind of mentioned that wrapping up warm and getting the layers. Basically, whatever the weather's doing, within reason, there are clothing, there is clothing that can help you endure that. I mean, enjoy that, sorry. Um, <laughs> so layers will be your friend in the winter. You can take them off, tie them around your waist if you get hot. And it's, for me, it's, I always end up putting too much on, but it helps me get out the door if you've got lots of clothes on or something nice that you're wearing and you think, oh, it's going to keep me warm and cosy. And then you can start. And that's always the hardest part. Yeah, you can always strip off layers if you do get exactly. too warm. Yeah. Next tip, tip number three, set a goal. And we're not talking about an end of next season season goal for a triathlon PB. We're talking about a goal for now, for winter. Maybe it's a 5k PB. Maybe it's just a goal to do all the cross country races in your in your area. Maybe it's a 1500 meter PB in the pool. Uh, but a specific goal that you can work on in winter to keep you motivated and that will carry on into your triathlon goals for next season. Mm. And again, leading on from that, work on your weaknesses. Now, kind of can help towards a certain goal that you might have maybe for next season, but if you've identified any issues you've had throughout this year, now is the perfect time to actually focus on those. And this can be done indoors as well, but it's just using that, maybe you've got a bit more time than normal to address those areas, maybe go and see the physio if any niggles you've had and work out what is actually causing those. You can go and do some strengthening or some stretching and really dial in on those areas that need a bit of attention. Yep. And our next point, even if you don't have specific areas that need attention, do gym work. Strength work is something that suits all triathletes and is going to make a difference for all of them. So you should definitely get some strength work going. And if you do get into a routine now when it's easier to do it indoors, you'll find that it's easier to carry that on next season. As you go through the season, you can obviously tone it back a bit as you bring in the swimming and biking and running, uh, but you will have that routine and it'll definitely make a big difference to your triathlon goals next season. Yeah, and finally, why not do something different? Training doesn't have to be limited to swim, bike and run or gym. You can look outside away from that and do some yoga, go and do a Pilates, even doing a gym class of some sort or spin class. It's still going to be working on your aerobic fitness, keeping you ticking over and just kind of, I guess, giving you that mental break. You can even look at doing something like cross country skiing, which we'll see lots of the um, athletes who actually live near the mountains doing. So just think outside the box a little bit and allow yourself that freedom to go and enjoy sport. Cross-country skiing, that's definitely something I've never tried. Well, there we go. Maybe, maybe for this winter. Yeah. yeah. If you guys have your own tips to get through winter, leave them in the comment section down below. We'd love to hear from you. Hope mm. some of these tips have helped you get through winter. We'll get through it together. On to try news now. And this new world record, or should I say three world records, has caught our eye. This is some mega ultra treadmill running on a manual treadmill. Mm. This has been set by Don Wright. I'll say this, these three world records. Now, personally, to get me on the treadmill for more than 40 minutes, even in the winter, is quite a challenge. Well, Don Wright has run over 100 miles on a manual treadmill. So he's broken three world records in the process. First, at the 12-hour mark, he covered 65 miles. Then, at the 24-hour mark, he covered 114 miles. And before that, in actual fact, at the he covered 100 miles in 19 hours 52. So those are three different world records all in one attempt. On a manual treadmill too. He did this for a good cause. It's for the Lifetime Foundation, which has uh, set its target to improve health and nutrition in schools across the USA. So he was raising money for that, supported by 10,000 or sponsored by 10,000. And apparently it's part of their Feats of Strength series. So there's going to be a few more feats of endurance and strength uh, coming from this team in raising funds for this uh, foundation. And we'll look out for those because this one was pretty crazy. Yeah, exactly. Some more news coming out this week, and that is from Xterra. They have announced the venue for the Xterra World Championships 2023. Uh, that's, of course, because it's no longer going to Maui every year. They're going to rotate it around the world, apparently, except this time it's going straight back to Malvino in Italy, where they had it this year in 2022. So the date's been announced September 23rd in 2023 in Malvino, Italy, for those Xterra World Championships. They've also announced the whole schedule of the rest of the races on their calendar where you can qualify for those Xterra Worlds, uh, starting with Xterra South Africa in January. And there's also a new race in Oman later in the year. Yeah, some pretty cool looking venues. I'm going to have to learn to ride a mountain bike to get mm. an excuse to go to some of those, I think. There's another new race that's just been announced onto the triathlon calendar, and that is another part of the Challenge series. It's heading to Australia, to Canberra, the capital, and that's going to be, well, this time next year, 26th of November, 2023. 
Now it's time for What The Tech. And Zwift has launched a new map. It's called Urukazi. It's part of the tour of Mercury Islands. And there are eight new routes for cycling and running and eight new badges for cycling on the new map called Urukazi. I said that already, right? You have, yeah. But those, ne those words might just sound yeah. like they don't mean anything. Made but up. they do have oh. meaning. Yes, yeah, so apparently, I had to Google this, but what does Urukazi mean? Now, according to Zwift, it's the combination of the two Okinawan words of Okinawa, obviously a place in Japan. Uru means shore and Kazi means breeze. And the combination of the two worlds is meant to evoke the serene, untouched character of the southern Japanese archipelago. On the roads of Urukazi, you'll find a Zwifty interpretation of these islands' scenery as you ride pavement gravel. This is the interesting bit, a new type of surface not yet found anywhere else on Zwift. Not sure what that means. What do you think that could be? No idea. Road. Grow. We might no, have to get on Zwift to find out. Or you guys could just let us know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Bib jeans, anybody? Yeah, I'm not talking rubbish here. There is actually apparently some new kit that could be coming for the AG2R Citroen Pro Cycling Team who wear those iconic brown bib shorts. Now their kit comes from Rosti and you'll probably recognize that kit. Well, apparently they could be having a bit of a change up as these brown shorts might be becoming denim shorts. And you're probably thinking, yes, we've seen that before in cycling, but this is not just denim looking cycling shorts. These are apparently going to be actual denim cycling shorts. Yeah, apparently they're made up of 48% cotton, 22% recycled polyester, 15% polyester, and 15% elastane to make them actual denim cycling shorts. And they have been tested, apparently ridden over 2,000 miles over the summer in them to test them out for their moisture wicking and comfort and anti-chafing and everything else. And apparently they passed the test. And there's talk that AG2 or Citroen might actually be wearing these now. This feels a little bit like a bit of an April Fool's thing, <laughs> to be honest, I'm not gonna lie. I'll be dubious if we do actually ever see them riding it, but then they did go through the whole season wearing brown shorts, so don't put anything past them. Well, apparently they are going to be available to the public for sure, whether the team are riding, we don't know, but they're coming on sale in February at 169 euros a pair. There you go, for your hipster cycling kit. Also in the tech news, we noticed this article which tells us what the top runners were wearing in the New York Marathon, which is quite interesting because for the first time ever, Under Armour had a pair of shoes on the podium on an international major marathon. And they weren't only on the podium, they were on the top of the podium. The women's winner, Sharon Lucchetti, in her first marathon was the first time ever Under Armour had had a pair of shoes winning a major marathon. If you're interested in the rest of them, we'll put the list up on screen now. Uh, quite a selection of shoes there. Well, it's interesting to see such a mixture. I think a couple of years ago, it was pretty much dominated by Nike, wasn't it? And also really interesting to see a lot of shoes with prototypes. Now that's because the rules have changed, but we saw Hoka Rocket times two. They had three runners in the top 20, I think, in their new prototype. That's not gonna be released until maybe February or March to the public. We also saw those shoes used at the World Championships in um, Hawaii in um, triathlon. Mm -hmm. And then also, if you did watch the race, you might have um, noticed Des Linden, the winner of the Boston Marathon from 2018. She went out hard and was at the front and had very noticeable looking shoes. And they are a prototype prototype from Brooks and apparently they're not going to be coming out until the spring of 2024. Yeah, and in fact those winning Under Armour Velocity Elite shoes were also prototypes but won't, won't be available until 2023. So a lot of prototypes. If you are wondering about this, we work so we googled it mm. uh, because prototypes were banned in the new shoe rules of World Athletics uh, but then they unbanned them at the end of 2020. Uh, so they said no prototypes uh, has to be available to the public and then they've rescinded that and now those prototypes have to become available to the public within 12 months otherwise the prototype expires and you can't use it again although I imagine they just do a tiny tweak and call it a prototype 2.0 won't they? Yeah, maybe. But also you might wonder why they're waiting until 2024. There's still the rules of the prototype having to be available to the public is still in place for the Olympics mm -hmm. and the World Athletic Series, I think. So, yeah. yeah, you need to sort of, the running companies have obviously done their research and knowing exactly how far to push these rules. Yep. And one final bit of tech we've noticed this week is Tier partnering with Whoop with their Anywhere Whoop 4.0. Uh, that means you can put your Whoop not on your wrist 
and Tia have now made special swimsuits, jammers for the men and one-piece swimsuits for the women where they have a special pocket built into them and you can take your whoop off your wrist and slide it into that pocket and it can track your body movements and all those body metrics that a whoop tracks far more accurately than it does on your wrist while you're swimming. This is obviously only available with the whoop 4.0 uh, and you have to obviously buy the whoop 4.0 and the the swimsuit separately and then obviously put them together and swim but yeah this uh measuring all your data is just getting easier and easier yeah more incentives to go and get back to swimming hey james mm, yeah no. <laughs> well moving on we have a giveaway our partners at precision fuel and hydration are very kindly offering a package worth a hundred pounds of race day nutrition and fuel for five lucky winners and that also includes a video consultation with one of the experts to really nail in your race strategy so for that you just need to go into the description below click on the link there answer a question and then yeah fingers crossed you'll be one of the lucky winners good luck well christmas is just around the corner and if you're looking for something special to buy the triathletes in your family well gtn's black friday sale is now on so you can head over to our shop and get 30 percent off all of our team kit that is the jerseys bib shorts and wind vests it's a pretty special deal well there's an even better deal on our casual wear you can mm. get up to 50 percent off and we've got fairly new jumpers these are super cozy i've been living in this one <laughs> um perfect with the winter coming if you just want to kind of support and think you're involved in triathlon but without having to actually go and do any exercise i mean yeah that yeah. takes lots of boxes for me um but all you need to do is just head over to the gtn shop and make the most of black friday sale whilst it lasts Now for race news, and as we mentioned, it is a brief one as we're winding down the season, but it was still very hot competition at Ironman 70.3 Melbourne. And the women's race was won by Ellie Salthouse, who had a very strong run to finish in a time of four hours, three minutes, 18 seconds ahead of Amelia Watkinson in second, and Lotta Wilms with an incredibly strong swim, finishing in third. Yeah, on the men's side, it was pretty much an all-Australian fair, except for Sam Osborne, who was in sixth uh, from New Zealand. All the other... 20 pro men on the start line were from from Australia and the winner was an Australian. Steve McKenna took the win there with a blisteringly fast 109 run. Charlie Quinn was in second and Nicholas Free in third. And as we said, the season is winding down, but there are two big Ironmans coming up this weekend uh, with Ironman Arizona and Ironman Cozumel and both of them have pretty stacked fields as those pros look to uh, Get that early qualification for next year's Kona using some of this season's fitness before they go on their Christmas break. And then the following weekend, it is the grand final for the WTCS Abu Dhabi. Uh, so that's also going to be worth watching. And then really is the end of the season, I think. <laughs> It's caption competition time, and we had this picture of Flora Duffy and Maya Kingma riding up Flora Duffy Hill last week. And yeah, we've got quite a few plays on this one. The first from Clement Suligoj, who says, reach the peak in sport, and you get a hill named after you. Yeah, yeah. Andrew Lovock says, Flora, you're not the Kingma of the mountain on this hill. <laughs> what you did there. Wee Mags, what do you mean? You've got the permanent QOM here. <laughs> Uh, Tune85 says, have I ridden that hill? It's got my name written all over it. <laughs> and the winner this week goes to Andy Taylor, says king, ma and queen of the mountain. Well, hill. Well, oh. congratulations, Andy. Nice play on words there. You will get a GTN cap sent to you. All you need to do is get in touch and we'll make sure it reaches you. Yep. And this week, we've got this photo from Kona a few weeks ago uh, of some goats watching the cyclists go past. Uh, and I'm going to go with uh, goat. Why are they calling her a goat? Who is Daniela Reef anyway? <laughs> All right, well, that is bringing this week's show to a close, but we've still got plenty of videos coming out, including this weekend, an event called The Swimmer, which I took part in. Um, there wasn't much swimming involved, but there was quite a lot of cold water immersion, let's put it that way, and running across London. It's all in the name of fun. Which is why Heather did it, not me. Cold yeah. water immersion and me, no. I mean, you'll see that I didn't exactly excel at my cold water immersion. But anyway, yeah, keep an eye out for that one. If you have enjoyed today's show, give us a like and hit that globe so you don't miss any of those videos. Yeah, and if you're looking for something to watch right now, Mark and I did a one by versus two by comparison. Is one by ready for your bike? Well, click the video now and you can find out. <laughs>